Section 9.2, A number for regression, video 3. As previously, when we did ANOVA for testing multiple population means, we're going to have an ANOVA table when we're testing the effectiveness of a model, or ANOVA table for regression, if you will. This table looks exactly like the one we saw before. Uh, we had three sources of variability. Well, we had two sources. We had groups and errors, and together they made the total variability. But I wanted to start with what we previously had to show you how it differs from what we're about to do. Uh, first off, we're no longer going to call it the variability in groups, but rather the variability invoked by the model. And again, when I say the model, I mean the equation. So the beta 0 plus beta 1x part of the population regression model. As far as the degrees of freedom, um, there are formulas for one, two of them, and the third one is just always the same value. This column is still additive, meaning that the first two add up to the third. For ANOVA for regression, the degrees of freedom for the model is always the number one. Always, always, always. I'm trying to remember exactly why it's one. It is one because, I believe because there is one variable. Yes. One degree of freedom for the model. The formula for the degrees of freedom in the error is n minus 2, where n is the number of ordered pairs that we use to create the model. And then the total degrees of freedom, if we add these, is n minus 1. There are formulas for the sum of squares. Most of the time, these will be given. They are additive in the sense that the first two add up to the third one. But just to show you what they are, the sum of squares for the model is not going to fit in this box, so I'll just put an asterisk there. But it's usually called SS model, sometimes abbreviated SSM, but model meaning the equation. And of course, the sum of squares for error is SSE, and the total sum of squares is SST. I do want to quickly show you the formulas that generate the sum of squares, just to kind of show you how they're related. In fact, I'm going to show you over here. For SS model is equal to the following sum. SS model is equal to the sum of the squares of y hat minus y bar. Y bar being the mean or the average of all of the observed Y values, and Y hat being the predicted Y value for each point. So we're, we're squaring the deviations behind what is predicted for each X and what the average Y value was. SS errors is the sum of the squares of the differences of each observed y value with the predicted y value. In other words, what were the observed minus what the model predicted? In other words, the sum of the squares of the residuals. And the SS total is the sum of these, but it is its own sum as well. It's the sum of the squares of the differences of each observed y value and the average y value. There's a picture that ties all three of these differences together, but since it's something I'm not going to hold you accountable for, I'll spare you the details. But regardless, the SS's will be given to you, probably all three. If two of them, then you can add or subtract to find the third. The rest of the ANOVA table completes just like it did before. It's not really fair to compare these two based on their degrees of freedom, so we scale them down based on their degrees of freedom. Here's one of the easiest formulas ever. To find the mean square sum for the model, you just take the sum of the squares for the model and divide it by its degrees of freedom. But of course, its degrees of freedom is 1. I'm going to go ahead and write over 1, realizing how silly that is algebraically, but it's just to emphasize that it's the same construct as before. Sum of squares divided by de degrees of freedom gives mean sum of squares. 
And the same thing down here, the mean sum of squares for errors is the sum of squares for errors divided by its degrees of freedom, n minus 2. And as before, the F statistic, because remember, we're doing a hypothesis test. The F statistic is just the ratio of the MSs, MS model over MS error. And recall that what this is, this is the test statistic for the hypothesis test. And remember, we're testing whether or not the model is ineffective, that's the null hypothesis, or whether the model is effective. Now, if we're going to do the critical value approach, then we would need a critical value to compare this test statistic to. Uh, but as we discussed previously, I won't give you a table for the F distribution because it would be require multiple pages. Um, if we're going to do the p-value approach, then we would need to be able to turn this into a p-value. Uh, in, in a future video in this series, I will, I will get on Excel and show you how to turn the F statistic into its corresponding p-value. But in a lot of the problems, you're going to be given the p-value anyway, so that's nice.